What's up, Tim Sykes here with Jackaroo. I'm gonna fist bump him because I don't wanna touch his hand because he's been sick lately, but I guess now maybe I'll be sick and lose some weight too. <laughs> Jackaroo just surpassed a crazy milestone, a million dollars in trading profits. What date? November 5th. November 5th, here we are, December what, 20? 19th, 20th and 20th. December 20th, I couldn't get up to you know, New Hampshire quick enough to, to like be there for the million dollars. Now he's at nearly 1.7 million. So you've made like roughly $700,000 in like a month and a half. I, I, I guess so. I mean, <laughs> understand most traders lose 90% of traders lose. I'll even say 99% of traders lose in the 1% who do make it. They're not making millions of dollars. They might make like a few hundred dollars. So this is not the norm. He is an exception to the rule of this industry full of losers. How did you do it? How did you rise above the odds and the stats and everyone else? Um, before, like, let's just cut this out. Like, <laughs> I feel like there's so much to talk about. Like, we should zone in on like one thing. Like, what should we zone in? No, on? this is this is gonna be a marathon. We're not cutting this, by the way. This is good. <laughs> you don't get All that. Right. We we can edit your girlfriend Mariana. She gets. I edit don't get control. any edits. No, you get nothing. This is full transparency, baby. I mean, I don't really know where to start, but like 2017 is like when I first got interested in it. And How did you get interested in it? What does that mean exactly? We're going to go through everything here, okay? Okay, let's go through everything then. Let's do it. All right. So 2017, I was coming out of high school. and I would say that I started getting a lot of anxiety just about my life. And all my friends were going off to college. And here's Jack, Jackaroo, like, what are you doing? And I just had no clue what I was doing. I thought firefighting would be cool because the hours were 24 on, 72 off. And I always had kind of an entrepreneur mindset after I read uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And that was literally the only book that ever kept my attention ever. And I was just interested in kind of doing my own thing and not working for a boss. I did valet when I was growing up and I worked at a five-star restaurant um, in Connecticut, one of the nicest restaurants. I got a lucky job for my neighbor who, uh, his uncle was the, one of the high up managers and he basically got me the job and I got into the best location and I was making really, really good money. Like I didn't get- What's really good money? Um, I would say minimum wage plus 15, 20 an hour in tips. So like it was adding up quick, like in, in the cash and I was working as much as I could because it was so good and I knew, it's just like the market, right? Um, I feel guilty if I miss a good play. And I felt guilty if like I turned down any shift because I knew how precious like this job was compared to everyone else. I saw what they were doing. I saw how they were working. And I was like, this job is like the best thing that I could ask for. I was driving nice cars. I was test driving nice cars and they were paying me. Like I didn't understand it at all. Did you joyride like in uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off where you leave it with um, a valet and you're like, take extra good care of it. And then you're like, yeah. I mean, not gonna lie, like one time. Full transparency, this is a confessional. I mean, maybe more than one time. Oh, <laughs> damn. Um, Don't trust valets. That's, if you take nothing away from this video, remember that. Yeah, I mean, we would get like super nice cars like McLarens, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, but they wouldn't let us drive those. Like those would be parked up front and then they'd throw us like 40, 60 bucks. I think our biggest tip was like one or 200. Um, and that was just between a couple of us. So like they would literally throw us like hundred bucks, like 50 each right there. And we keep their nice car up front. So we always look forward to them coming in. But then there would be other people that came in like with Bentleys and they, they didn't really care too much or like Audi RS7s or a uh, so Porsche. You can, you can divide the people by their car. Mm -hmm. I was one of those when I had my Lamborghini and Ferrari and I would tip the valet 80 or hundred bucks because yeah. I wanted it kept out front because mm -hmm. I didn't want them taking it anywhere and I could watch it out front because I'm always suspicious of valets and everybody else. Um, so I would say there was like a BMW M3, like six speed. Uh, this guy was super cool. He was like, take it for a joyride, man. Like it's a lease, I don't care. And I was like, dude, this is like my dream car, man. Like this is so cool. And like there was Porsche 911s and there was Nissan like 350Zs and like they're all standard. And uh, a couple of times, like um, I was right there, like in Connecticut near the highway. So a couple of times, like I hopped on the highway a little bit <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, like I was nervous, like my heart was racing, like driving that car on the highway because I knew like I was in, I was doing something like not really like 
You know what I mean? Like I could get in big trouble for this. We're gonna call this video Confessions of a Valet Turned Day Trader. Mm -hmm. Write that down. <laughs> We're not even gonna talk about the fact that he's a millionaire now. We're just gonna say a valet turned day trader. But I mean, yeah, I did that and I was working with so many of like my good friends. Like I was I was working with my neighbors who were like my best friends. So we all like trusted each other and we all at the end of the day, our boss trusted us there just because he's like he knew we got the job done better than anybody else. Like he called us like our hometown, the boys, because there's probably 10, 15 of us that all worked and we were known as like the best workers. Um, Why'd you leave this? This sounds fantastic. No, I kept doing it. And even when I was making 10K a month, I was still working because I just loved the job. And I just, I kept working and like- How much I did you save up? Um, so at first, when I first started was January, 2017 and I graduated in 2016, but I've been working the job for like two, two and a half years. Once I first got my license, you're making 10 K a month as a valet. No. Um, when I was making 10 grand trading, oh, okay. I was still working. I was like, I was like, damn, no, no, man, no, no, like no. maybe, no, no, no. maybe you shouldn't be trading anymore. But like over like the two and a half years, I had like 10 grand saved up January, 2017. Right. And then I was going to open like the Robin hood account. And then just by pure luck, literally my new year's resolution in, in 2017 was I'm going to invest something. Like I said, I, I always wanted to do like real estate or like trading. And I knew that stocks had potential and I had 7,500. So I was like, oh, I'm going to invest this money because I just like had, I wanted to just grow my money. I just wanted to like, like have a process and like grow my money and kind of just like try to get ahead of the curve. And I didn't really have like any goals just to, like start a process. And just by the stroke of luck, I ran into an old friend and he was like, yeah, I'm doing trading too. And he was like, I'm doing penny stock trading with Tim Sykes. And I was like, like, what is it? What do you mean penny stock? Like what are penny stocks? What is, what is this? And he's like, dude, they go up like a hundred percent a day, a thousand percent. Did he talk like that too? Mm -hmm. He talked like that. And I was just like, dude, like this is like, you're lying. Like, what do you mean? And then I went home and I Googled Tim Sykes and like, I think that entire night, like I stayed up all night and I was just watching videos. So I was like, like, this is, this is something like I've never even fathomed in my head before. Yeah. And then from there, I was very fortunate. He was like, dude, you can't use Robin hood. Um, so I ended up opening Thinkorswim just because they had paper trading and live trading. So I felt, and he was using it. Um, and I like the charting and I still use Thinkorswim because that's like the charts I started on. I prefer E-Trade and Interactive Brokers. Um, I, don't tr I don't execute with Thinkorswim, I just use their charts. I, ex I execute with E-Trade cool. and I think E-Trade is the best broker to start with. Um, I think they're the, the least worst of all your choices. Yeah. I wouldn't say they're the best. I mean, every broker is gonna, like Suck. no broker is gonna be good. You're gonna miss fills. They're gonna charge you like maybe a random fee. Like there's gonna be, like things that are gonna make you mad no matter what, but you gotta go with the the best worst broker, you know what I mean? So do you think like, it's fair to say like E-Trade sucks the least? E-Trade sucks the least, I love when you say that. I'm sorry E-Trade, I'm sorry to all brokers, but that's that's just reality. Yeah, so I'd say from there, um, I went over, I had $7,500 in my live trading account and we made a couple of live trades, just like that first month in January, 2017. I like lost 60 bucks, like, and I was just like, like I don't know what I'm doing yet and I saw uh, the Tim challenge and I was like, like, this looks really cool. Like this is where all like the top traders are. And I was like, I need to get in this somehow. But I was still a little bit skeptical. Like, is this really true? And then later came the supernova ETRM. And I remember just watching it as it was a multi-day runner from two to 20. And I, I just watched it go up throughout the days. And I was just like, like, it's literally doing, like it's literally doing it. Like, this is it. And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's actually like real. And then I was like, Hey, can we put a little mind blown explosion <laughs> like emoji there? Cool. So then from there, um, I went home and I was like, mom and dad, like, like, this is it. Like, I know a hundred percent, like this is me. And from there, uh, I convinced my mom to help me with the challenge a little bit. I think I put, I put up like 4k and they matched it with like 3k or something. And then that, that took the rest of my money out. So I just had like 7,500. I had like 200 bucks in my bank account. Like I was already all So you all in. invested in your education. This is a big problem where people mm -hmm. are like, if I invest in my education, I have nothing to trade with. What mm -hmm. made you invest in your education? Because uh, that's a big step. I would just say because I felt like $7,500 was like enough to trade with. 
And it's not like I had like less than 500. Like I had saved up money throughout the years, but I was basically all in. Like I had all my money, I had like 50% of my money in education, 50% of my money in my trading account. And I, I still knew that I had to keep working and keep saving up money. Luckily for me, like my parents didn't make me pay any bills or anything. And I was still young at this time. And I just had graduated. Yeah. But I was super excited because I knew this was for me. And my dad always doubted me. He was like, you're never going to make it in trading. <laughs> oh, did, he, did he try to show you industry stats that like 90% of traders lose? No, he was basically just like, you got to work with your hands. Like firefighting's good. Why are you giving up on that? Um, and I wasn't really giving up on firefighting yet. But what like, was that firefighting movie where like everyone dies? No, I, don't, I don't know movies. I only know Weren't you afraid stock of that? Charts. What was that movie where, where there's all the firefighters and it's like Kurt Russell setting fires. And he's actually, I just ruined the ending. I'm sorry. But were you, were you scared of like dying? Um, no, I thought being a hero was cool. <laughs> <laughs> but you like trading. And so your dad was like, do something with your hands. And you're like, no, trading feels right. Trading, I just knew like deep down, like this is it. And I still did um, the EMTs. I still did become an EMT by the end of the year. And I was still doing the firefighting stuff because I knew like deep down, like trading like could not work. You know what I mean? So I was still doing both. I was doing firefighting. I was learning trading and I was working all at the same time. And how did you sleep, man? That's crazy. I don't know. I mean, I was just going after it because like I wanted to to be where I am right now, like so bad, you know what I mean? Like I wanted it so bad from the beginning. I've, I've had that work ethic mm-hmm. for these entire four years that I've been doing it. And um, I would say, so to get more back into the trading, I- The beginning I, of your trading. I like this, because yeah. we're going over every single detail. I want you guys to understand, like, again, most traders lose, but this is what it takes in order to succeed. Like multitasking, work ethic. What was it in the beginning? Like when you joined the challenge, you're still an EMT, were you still a valet too? Mm-hmm. You're an EMT, valet, trader. Mm-hmm. I mean, what else time is there? There was no time for anything. <laughs> and I was going to EMT class from 9 a.m. to, I think it was like 2 or 3. And then from 2 or 3, I was going to the gym for an hour. And then I was just going into my valet shift at 4 or 5 to like tonight to like 10. I would get home, just sleep, just do that over and over. Throughout the, the weekends, I would maybe do something with my friends or I would still even work on the weekends, but like I was literally always doing something. When no did you have time what. to study with that schedule? Um, so I was not studying that much in the beginning, but when I did go to valet, like I put ear earphones oh. in and I snuck it and I was just like listening. But the thing is like, I always thought I was studying because like I was always thinking about it. Like when I woke up, like I was, I was thinking about it. I was trying to like, just got the reps in and I was, I was reading Twitter every night and I was watching YouTube kind of when I got home. And this was like just the beginning of my studying. What were in the earbuds? Were you listening to webinars, DVDs, YouTube video videos? Lessons? Okay. YouTube videos. Nice. But the EMT class only lasted for uh, two months in 2017 and it was like in the middle. So like at the beginning, um, we can just take a little step back, but like I was going over my friend's house and he was showing me like the basics and I was paper trading a little bit. And then was your friend in the challenge too or no? No, he wasn't in the challenge. Like I, I knew that I was more dedicated than him. And I actually hid that I was in the challenge from him just because like, I knew that I was just more dedicated than him. You didn't want to make him feel bad that like he introduced you to me, but you were more dedicated. Yeah. I didn't like want to make him feel bad. And interesting. I knew that like, I just had to focus on like myself because he, he wasn't going to do it for me. I had to do it myself. You know what I mean? And where do we go from here? Just take uh, it step by step, man. You know, you're going, your EMT class ends. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. You, you start trading more? This is, this is the big turning point. Um, like I said, I was going to the gym and I was always into the gym throughout high school. Uh, when I was a freshman, <laughs> not really anymore. I haven't gone in a while, but Oops. when I was a freshman, like I got bullied a little bit um, just because I was skinny and like I was just easy to pick on because... Uh, a lot of people just pick on me. They're jealous of your hair? I don't know what it Bastards. was, but... Jack's hair is beautiful! Screw you! Um, so, I actually got, like, hurt at the gym. Uh, which, it's... I don't really want to talk about, like, what it was, but, like, it was really humbling, and, like, it changed, like, it changed my life forever. You like, had a million-dollar injury, too? Mm-hmm. I had I, a million-dollar injury! I had a million-dollar injury. We're both from Connecticut! <laughs> we have similar hair. If I grew this out, I have glasses! He has glasses. No, we're, we're super similar, and I'll get into that later. But 
basically I got this injury and then it was like, Literally, all I, all I did is I woke up and then I could actually start putting in the screen time. So this is when I started paper trading um, every single day. And I was still going to work. To, like, I took a couple weeks off work. But now you have to understand, like, I have saved up more money. And, like, I did graduate the EMT class. And the thing is about the EMT class, like, growing up, I didn't pass any classes in high school at all. And going into the EMT class, he was like, okay, only a third of you will pass the class. And going into it, like I was already dumb, so I was already like, I wasn't dumb, but I like I didn't pass classes with like flying, flying colors, and it was like challenging for me. And there's so many terms and like hard things. So when I did pass, and I was the first one to get it out of everyone, and it wasn't even like at that point, I didn't even like it. It was just me proving to myself that if I had hard work and dedication, it doesn't matter like where you are, like you can be like the top no matter what. It's just all about like how much work you put in. I didn't even enjoy it. It was just literally just proving to myself that I could do it and making my parents happy. And another thing was, um, I was just trading on a laptop at this time and the firehouse, um, the firehouse like let you go to the class, but you had to put the money up front. So it was like 1500 bucks. And like, I wanted to get that 1500 bucks back. Um, and that was kind of was like some motivation to keep going. And then my mom said that if I did get the 1500 bucks back, like I could buy a computer um, and like, kind of get like a little trading setup because my laptop was like terrible to trade on. And like, I do have a video on my Twitter of like my first trading setup, like literally in my mom's basement with like a TV as my second monitor. We'll embed that. We're gonna show yeah. that here. Okay, I'll send it to you. Cool. So like, that's literally what I started on in my mom's basement. And from there it was just, let me think. Um, so then, okay, getting back to the injury. So I got injured and then I had already passed the class. So this was after the EMT class. And then this is when I really started studying because I knew that I only had so much left in the challenge and I just started studying. And then I got super motivated by some of the, I got motivated by Ducks and Roland seeing them come up. And like I saw Roland come up from like 100K and Ducks like, Ducks uh, was probably at like a few hundred thousand when I joined and just seeing him come up too. And what about was, Gritani? Gritani, um, he was already like, at the top at this point. So like he, he didn't motivate me as much because he was already there. Like seeing people that like are on the come up is so much more motivating cool. to me. Okay, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Even though he had another like 10 million to make. So like the top, he exploded through the top. Mm -hmm. But you like seeing that where it's like a few hundred thousand, a few hundred or a few thousand dollars and then turning into hundreds. Mm -hmm. or, or like, I think that's definitely the most challenging part. Like is that first come up, like that is the most challenging. Yeah. So that's what motivated me the most. And just seeing that was super inspired. And I knew that um, like I had to get above the PDT or no, hold on, let me back up again. So we can edit this, don't worry. Mm -hmm. This is a lot of stuff. This is a lot of stuff and we're only on year one. No, it's good. <laughs> this is good. We, we can divide got, this up too. I've never gotten this detail. This is it. good. This is what people need to hear. People need to see like, okay, so you're a valet driver. You're also EMT. You do EMT basically for your parents. You know, you have an injury, your injury gives you more time to trade. Like, this is life, this is how this works. And mm -hmm. you've always adapted, right? I've always adapted, yeah. And I would say at this point is when I get, like, this is when I'm like, okay, mom and dad, like, I'm not doing this EMT stuff like this. Like, I went to a few calls too, and it like just kind of grossed me out. <laughs> yeah. and, and like I said, with the entrepreneur stuff, like I just felt like I got thrown around, like my, the chief of the firehouse, like treated me like not well. He was like, go get that right now. Like, and like just treated me like, like not well. And the same thing with the valet, like the, the manager of the restaurant came out and yelled at us this one time. And, and this is why I'll, I'll never respect like uh, managers of restaurants or like anyone like that. We lit, there's literally two of us and there's a play um, at the Bushnell and 30 people are trying to get their car at the same time. And I'm, I'm running, grabbing someone's car, s grabbing it, leaving it and just opening the door and just sprinting to get the next one and getting it and, and doing that over and over again. And then um, the manager comes out and he's like, what are you guys doing? Like you guys need to work harder, like get the cars and like get this and like just yelling at us. I'm like, first of all, you're not even my boss. And second of all, I'm working as hard as I possibly can. So like, like back off, buddy. And like, basically, like I wasn't scared at all. Like I, 
I called him off and I was like, dude, like we got into a little bit of fight and then he called my manager and he was like, like Jack's doing this and this and that. And thank, like, thankfully my manager of the company, like he was super cool and like big hat to you. Huh? He backed you? He, he backed me. You? He backed me. Cause Good. he, he knew like how hard I worked. Um, just like a little story. Um, the Travelers Championship in Cromwell, Connecticut, like yeah. it's a golf tournament that we used to do. And one year I worked 95 hours throughout that week because I was doing 4 a.m. And then I would work that entire, entire morning. And then I would go and do the restaurant at night sometimes. So I was yeah. working like all day. And I was How literally- How many hours did you sleep? I mean, when I wasn't working, I was sleeping. So I, I did the math and there was like how many hours in a week? It was like 130, 150 hours. So yeah. like I, like two thirds of the week I was just working. Crazy. And he always like respected me after that. And he was like, like, dude, I know you're one of the hardest workers here. And then I convinced him like, because people at the, the Travelers Championship, like they were like you could just get around with just like sitting there and getting the same pay because the tips, like you got the tip and it went towards the community tip jar. Yeah. And I was like, that's not fair because some people are literally not even working and like everyone else is moving yeah. the car. That's why communism doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So I was like, we're gonna write the names of who moved the car. <laughs> and then at the end, whoever moves the most cars gets a percentage, the highest percentage of the tips. And then like the people who don't move cars, like they get a very low percentage. And I ended up convincing him to do that the next year. And then I got, I got number one and I moved the most cars. And that was just like, that was cool because like I literally kind of told my boss like what to do and like it worked mm -hmm. and like I got the money and it was just really cool. Um, so now f getting back to where we were with the valet job and studying. So this is when like I really started studying. What and year is this? Take us. This is still 2017. Okay, cool. Like this is the first year. It's good. Um, so now to get into the end of the year, um, towards the end of the year, like, oh, like this is where like, it, I just keep going. Like I literally just keep going. And th my next step was, I, I went to the conference in September. Um, and this is where like it really changed for me. Like I started real money trading um, like a month or two before, like in the summer. Were you paper trading before? I was paper trading. so. Like I said, I took the class at the beginning of the year. I got into the challenge. I was just witnessing, I was studying, I was working. And then like a little bit before halfway through the year was my injury. And then I was paper trading for like a month or two. And then towards the, the end of the year, then I was um, starting to real money trade. And I'd save up more money. Like maybe my, my net worth was back around like 12 to 15K at this point. And I started trading and I, I went to, I started trading and I was doing decent. Like I had two green months um, and t I did open up an E-Trade account because Steven Ducks and uh, Gritani and Huddy, they motivated me to short sell because they were making the most. I was like, why would I do something that, like they're making the most, so I wanna do what they're doing. So I had a 3K E-Trade account, account and I just had my 7,500 sitting in Thinkorswim. Like it was like up or down, like, like 500 bucks, like it didn't, like it wasn't anything like huge. And I started short selling with E-Trade with three grand. And uh, I grew it a little bit, like I made maybe like 500 in August and then like another 500 in July. And then um, I think your conference was a little bit earlier than September that year in 2017. Yeah. I think it was August, right? Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. So I had my best week ever of a thousand dollars and like my E-Trade account was up maybe like to 5k and I was like, wow, I'm really getting the hang of it. So I went out to, I paid for the conference, paid for my flight and went out to um, the conference and I just started like networking with a bunch of people that were there and it was just kind of cool because I realized like, like I went there and I just realized like I actually had like a decent amount of knowledge comparative to like everybody else. And I'll never forget this. Like I, I was there, like I got there every morning front row. And I remember Tim Sykes was like, you know, I have however many Instagram followers and I have however many students. And now there's however many you guys here. And now there'll be like three or four of you guys like out there in the crowd, like that are successful. And like, it didn't even like cross my mind. Like I'm one of them. I know I am just looking around. Um, I just knew that I would outwork every single person here. And I understood that like, like I had an advantage because I was just so young compared to everyone else. And like, I, I was on the right track um, and I was making money. 
And I would say the conference really helped me like, it got me too cocky though, like, like I'm saying, like I'm getting too cocky. And then I went <laughs> home and um, unfortunately, like I held a short position overnight because I didn't want to take, I didn't want to waste a day trade and it turned into like a thousand dollar loss and just like killed my morale. And I was just like, you know what? Like I'm never making this mistake again. Like I need to get, I need to start over PDT in 2018. Like I need that, that cushion and I need to make money. So this is where my next idea comes in um, with, uh, the friend who got me into trading, he, he was doing like other things, like he was in the selling stuff. So we, um, we got into business with this one guy who like, uh, I forgot where we met him, but we met this guy who was selling bamboo products, okay. like bamboo bedding and yeah. all this stuff. And, um, what we did was we ordered a bunch of pillows from China for like five bucks, <laughs> like a thousand pillows. And we drove to like New York to pick up these pillows. And this was like, we were, for I've the never, end of- I've never heard this. Keep yeah. Going. I know, I'm getting very, like this is like literally this. month this by is, month. This is beautiful. How so, are the bamboo pillows? Um, like honestly, they're pretty crappy. Like they're from China, they're <laughs> five bucks. So we literally rented a U-Haul truck, like the biggest one. And like we went down there and we got all the pillows. And then what we did was, we tried to sell them um, at a flea market, but they, we just weren't selling them quick enough. And this was like the fall season, like right after the conference. Yeah. And um, I was, so like, I was basically still studying at this time, but like not as much, like I was starting to get into the business because I, I really wanted to get over PDT because I just felt like it was way too hard under it. Yeah. And I, I completely stopped trading and I, I honestly didn't, wasn't studying too much at this time. Um, and I was just trying to get that money over PDT because like trying to grow it over PDT seemed like it would take longer than if I just jump started over PDT. I think um, it was definitely harder, but I'll get into that. Um, so we picked up the pillows and then we went to a mall kiosk and we rented out November and December. Um, and basically what happened was uh, at the flea markets, we could kind of like haggle and be like, come over, like feel our pillow. like and we would like kind of sell it to them. Um, like I still remember our lines, like it, it's, it helps you like not like sweat at night because the microfiber um, on the bamboo pillowcase and like it was super soft and we were selling it for like 25 bucks, like 20 bucks, like four or five X our money. Yeah. And like I said, we invested like 5K into it and like if we sold all the pillows, it would have been 25 grand. Yeah. And we had like sheets too, but like we were really big on the pillows. So like I would have had made enough money to get over PDT. Yeah. But unfortunately, like in the mall, like nobody's having it. Like you're like, oh, come feel our pillow. And they're like, like they're there for a purpose, right? When you're at a flea market, you're there to like kind of go around and like haggle with people and like kind of see like this what is people This in Connecticut? Want. Yeah, this is, um, it's Crystal Mall in Connecticut. It's like a random Connecticut flea market and you're trying to sell bamboo pillows? No, uh, yeah, in the flea market. But getting into the mall is like what we did. Okay. In November and December, we got into the mall. Yeah. And we rented out the kiosk. It was like 1500 or like 2K a month. Yeah. And just like rent out. And like I was saying, like nobody was buying our pillows at the mall. And this was probably like my low of 2017. Like going through the injury and like all this stuff, like this was just like really bad because I had the goal of getting over PDT. And like in my head, like I already thought I had it done. I was like, yep, I have these pillows. I'm just going to sell them. Nobody bought the pillows. Like it was so hard. <laughs> How many pillows did you sell? Uh, How maybe, many pillows do you still have? Do you still have these pillows somewhere? No, no. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I did with them. But <laughs> okay. I had, um, may, we maybe sold, sold 200 over the two months. And I'm telling you the hours of the mall, you had to be there at like 6, 7 a.m. And you left at 9 at night. And we were just sitting there not doing anything. Could you study? Mm -hmm. ah. So this is where the studying came back into play. Um, like... Uh, my friend would go to the gym every morning and I was like, no, I'm not going to the gym. Like I'm showing up and I'm watching Mark open. And this is where um, my first real idol came into play, like who I was really idolizing, which was Huddy and seeing him short all these OTCs. This is like, was his first big takeoff where he made his first hundred grand. Yeah. And he was just shorting WNDW, BTCS, BTSC, um, Buds, Can. Like I, I remember all the trades. I remember, um, I remember that day when all the stocks were running and then that bad news came out 
uh, the governor was like, something about weed's not going to happen. They yeah. gapped out and they all panicked. Like, I remember that day, I was like, this, like, that was so simple. Like, I literally could load into that with very good risk reward and, like, it was dumping. And, like, that even gave me more conviction. Like, I need to start with, like, a center point account. Like, I need to get this money. And the bamboo pillows just weren't selling. And my friend... <laughs> Sorry, it's not funny with the bamboo pillows. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is funny. We were trying everything. And um, this was, like, so what happened was my friend... Like, he, he didn't have as much money as me. And, like, I kind of stayed quiet about how much money I did have because I didn't want to lend him money. And, like, I didn't want to, like, go more negative. Like, I, was cl- I needed to get my goal. But he got hacked for 1500 bucks, And his bank went negative. And, like, we, like, we were, like, we, gotta can't, like, we can't pay for the mall kiosk anymore. Like, his, he's negative. And I was, like, dude, I can't, I can't lend you money, man. Mm. And she was, like, th- the mall manager came up to us, like, no, you guys can't leave. Like... And she literally handed us janitor jobs for the mall. And we were literally just like, we're so low at this point. Like literally they want us to go like mop the floors to make like 10 bucks an hour just to pay for a kiosk where we can't sell pillows. Damn. And basically what happened there was just like, we just grinded it out. And like, I was just so depressed every single day. And like, I would call my parents and be like, mom, we're not selling any pillows. Dad, we're not selling any, any pillows. We're not selling anything. And I'm like, mom, I'm not going to hit like my goal, like to get over PDT. And this is where like my mom really like played a massive role for me. And she was like, well, there is this mutual fund that has 11 grand in it or 12 grand or something. And like, we can give you like this 12 grand. And I was like, please, mom, please, please, please. And my dad was like, no, you're going to lose it all. That, that needs to stay in the fund. And like, I was like, mom, come on, please. I really need this money. And she eventually like agreed and I like convinced my dad and then they like, got super happy because like I remember just packing up that one day it was like like literally three years ago today like we, or not today but like this week like it was the, the the two-week conclusion and even on Black Friday like the pillows we didn't that was our best day but we didn't really like sell too many yeah so like I said we did maybe you sell s- them online at all you why were you like convinced like in person was the way to go mm. We didn't, we didn't know how to do it online, really. We gotcha. only know how to do it on per, in person. Okay. So the pillows just didn't sell. Now I'm sitting with like 3K worth of pillows, and I'm just like, this sucks. And <laughs> You could have a pillow fight and take out all your anger. Yeah, we could have a pillow fight. But like we were so like dedicated. Like we literally tried to make like a promotional video. Like, oh my God, we did this one thing. You got to cut your losses. <laughs> Cut your losses. I understand. The pillows didn't work out. Selling stuff online is not as easy as you might think, no matter if your pillows are bamboo. We dressed up as, like, pandas, <laughs> like, with onesie costumes on. Tell to, me like, you have this video. Um, I think I have the video somewhere yes, that I can find. we're going to try to put this video in. <laughs> but, like, we made this video. Like, it was so good. And, like, my friend comes, like, running in, and he, like, slides. Like, perfectly he slides, and his head just, like, falls right on the pillow. And, like, we tried, like, marketing that on Facebook. Like, come to Crystal Mall and, like, buy our pillows. <laughs> and I just, like, it didn't go anywhere. And, but basically, okay. Were you called pillow pandas? Uh, people just would laugh at us. Like, what are you guys doing in pillow costumes? And I would just have, I would have the same crappy lunch every single day at the, at the mall, the food mall. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, literally every single day. Was so I'm sure this. I didn't know about any of this. Yeah. This is good. Understand Jack is successful now, but he had his trials and tribulations. He wasn't always successful. At first, he was a pillow panda, a panda pillow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, like, thankfully, my mom gave me that money of whatever, like, of 11, 12K, and that got me over, that got me to, like, 30 grand. And I was like, all right, I'm opening up a center point account. And then I opened up a center point account, and the thing was, is that, okay, I started shorting, like, pot N was my first four-figure trade. Nice. Um, I shorted it uh, into the push in the morning on the first red day, and then it went down, like, 30 40%, and I ended up making, like, 1600 bucks. Nice. And I was like, yes, I'm, I'm getting it. Like, this is January, but, like, my other trades were just, like, the fees. I was, like, just borrowing shares. Like, I was spending 50 bucks a day just to borrow shares. Yeah. And, like... I realized that like I was okay so I made 1200 or two grand in January like my only real good trade was pot in and at this time this is when I start really studying again like I'm watching video lessons all day after the close like I'm, I'm this really is 2018 studying. this is okay yeah now we're on a 2018 so that was 2017 that was only the first year 2017 sucked for you 
2017 sucked, but it got my wheels turning. And then at this point, um, I was like, mom, like I need another two grand for the challenge. And she was like, all right, like we'll pay for it. Like at this point, I think they just like started feeling pity for me. (laughs) Um, so I got, I renewed my challenge membership. I started full-time trading. Uh, my profits weren't going anywhere. I was just slowly trading. And then, um, so let's just say I broke even pretty much the first, uh, three months, four months. Um, it was like up and down, up and down. Like, oh, I, my account was 31, back to 29, 30, 32, 29, 30. Because of the- Because of the fees. The fees. Mm-hmm. And this is a big reason why I don't like short selling, especially for newbies. The fees mm-hmm. are excessive. Sometimes you get squeezed. Did you get squeezed on any play? So we're getting into that. Oh no! So this was another, like this is almost where I had to just call it quits, but uh, I was trading Turtle Beach and like <laughs> at this point, like I remember, like you literally dip bought it at like ten bucks a share, and then like I started pushing to eleven. I was like, oh, overextending gap down setup, and then I started shorting it, and it just didn't really like it didn't really go anywhere. And then like it started like just squeezing up like fifty cents a share, and I was down like five, six, seven hundred bucks. And I was like, eh, I don't want to take this loss. Add more. I was like, oh, I'm just gonna bring my average up, and then once it dips to break even, I'll get out. And then I double downed, and then it kept going. And then I triple downed, and then I quadruple downed, and then I was all in. Into oh like God. the $13 resistance. I was literally all in. And then the stock went to 19. And like at this point, like I was literally just in my bathroom, just like puking. Like literally, I was just losing. I was down like 12 grand. Oh my God. And like I worked so hard. And like literally, my, I was like, my dad was right. I just lost all, all my money. Like it's all gone. Like I'm, I just can't. Why do didn't this. you follow my rule number one and cut losses quickly? The thing is, this is where, this is where Tim Grittani hurt me. Um, this is where trading tickers hurt me. Because I just, I did learn patterns from him, but I saw him get squeezed in his DVD. So I was like, oh, the best trader did this. Like, I can do this too. You know what I mean? Like, he's still the best trader and he got squeezed. Yeah. I was like, oh, I can do it too. So I got squeezed and... You can't do it too. I can't do it too. This is the danger, okay? Tim Grittani, no argument for me. He is the best trader. But as a newbie trader with a small account, especially given your whole background on this story, which I didn't even know about before this video... You cannot outlast a short squeeze. You cannot trade, you know, like Gratani trades with a multi-million dollar account. He can lose 100,000 or 200,000 on a trade. He has. Mm -hmm. He can still outlast it and then make another 100,000, 200,000 on the way down. With a small account, you cannot outlast it. You cannot double down, triple down, quadruple down. I was all in. It'll take you, so you cut your losses at 19? No, so it went to 19, I was down 12 grand and I honestly just like, I just left the room. I was just like, it's over. It's gonna blow me up. Like my entire thirty grand is gonna be gone. Like I was really convinced. Even though you gone. you can just with one button you can cut your losses. At this point, like I just couldn't take the twelve grand loss. And then, um, like nobody had no like. And this was the thing too about the conference in twenty seventeen. Like, like I met a bunch of people and I was fortunate enough to get into like I talked to John Papa and like John Papa was big at that time when he turned his sixteen k loss and like sixteen k in profits. And I was talking to John Papa and like a few other people that um, I'd still talk to who were like, were the first people like I met and like I started talking to and like just, and I was like, listen, um, this is one, this is also around when I met Dom, John Papa introduced me to Dom. So shout out to John Papa because he really like was the first connection I had. John um, and Dom are both challenge students. It's a whole community of challenge mm-hmm. students and everyone has their own journey. So basically I was just like, and I messaged Tim Grittani too, I was like, like I, I'm, I'm done. So like I'm done. And he was like, okay, all you can do now is just think of it logically. And it was like in a channel, like it pulled back a little bit. It was in a channel from like 17 to like 16. And he was like, if it breaks 17, this is like two hours to go. I came back to my computer. I was still feeling really sick. And if he was like, if it breaks 17, you just got to get out because it's literally just going to blow you up. And it was like a 10 K loss at that point. I was like, all right, I'm just going to take it. And Basically what happened, I was kind of fortunate. It, it did fail down to like 15 bucks and I got out for like negative 7,500. And then the key was that I, the next day made a video lesson on Profitly about my trade. And like literally it's still there and it was my first video lesson We're ever. We're gonna link that video below. I was a loser and I, I needed- Mark it. To, make a note. And that is like kind of my entire personality where like I'm always 100% transparent. I think that kind of has helped me. Um, with everything just because I've always been transparent. So 
we did the video or I did the video and then like I was like okay I don't have enough money to trade anymore I was back I was 7500 from 30k I was back below the PDT so this was when fortunately this is when Traveler's Championship was in the summer like uh, June so next month was June so I, I stopped trading or actually something I didn't really tell a lot of people was I did come back in and I revenge trade I, I don't think I really told a lot of people this because I, I recovered the money through a desperate act um, I came back in because my account was on Turtle Beach again no not Turtle Beach okay. I came back in um, because literally like I had 32K and I lost it and I was down to 25, right? So I still, like, I was a few hundred bucks above the PDT and I was like, all right, I'm gonna make it all back on CVSI. <laughs> and CVSI was like going on a run and then it gapped down one day and I was like, okay, it's over because I've seen this pattern before on uh, PA N and, and CANN, which were my two biggest trades at the time. And they both were over, they both were gapping down OTCs. Um, so CVSI was gapping down. It was like, this was when I was two bucks a share. Yeah. And it gapped down and I, I went all in right at the open. And then it held and it just squeezed. Like it just like, and I didn't understand how to like fill like on OTCs through the strength. And I just froze. And fortunately for me, I did get out. I did get out like into the squeeze at the top, like I covered dead top. And it, it did pull back and consolidate then went higher. So I saved myself money. But right when that happened, I just, then I was down to like 20K and I was like, oh you my God. You lost another 5K. 4K. 4K. Mm -hmm. So then my account was down to 21 grand. So in two trades, you lost basically half your account or like a third of your account. Third of my account. Mm -hmm. Two so, undisciplined trades, mm -hmm. mind you. Mm -hmm. Do you have to go, Stratty? Yeah, I don't want to interrupt. No worries. I saw you putting on your jacket. Like, thank you. Good seeing you. Thank Stay you. See you, Stratty. Cool. I'll Sorry. check in in a bit. Thank you for the challenge. Yeah, for sure. See you guys. Bye. Stay safe. So in two undisciplined trades, you lost a third of your account. Mm -hmm. Short selling is dangerous. Breaking rules while short selling is even more dangerous. Mm -hmm. Did you learn your lesson from these two trades where you just, you're just sick to your stomach? I was so sick to my stomach. And that, that really set like that. I was like, I hate short selling. This is short selling is terrible. And, oh, and short selling dangerously. Short yeah, selling sure. is fine if you abide by the rules. Yeah, but at that point... It's like, like driving a Ferrari 200 miles an hour off a freaking cliff that said, you know, don't go 35 miles mm -hmm. an hour or above 35. And you're like, I hate Ferraris. It's mm -hmm. not the Ferrari's fault. It's you ignoring the signs. Mm -hmm. But at that point, like I just had to convince myself that it was terrible so I could just move on. And my desperate act was like literally like sometimes I would have a lot of fun. Like me and my friends growing up, like we all had quads, like my three neighbors and we all like rode quads and there was like cornfields and like trails across from my house. Literally just had to sell my quad, like just sold my, like it was my, my baby, like my prized possession. I literally just had to sell it, get that four grand back. So I literally ditched my quad, got the 4k back. And then I was like, all right, I need a long reset. And at this point, like just went back to work and I got as many hours as I could and kept working. This is mid 2018. Mm -hmm. This is June. Okay. So at this point, I was talking to Dom for maybe a couple months now, and uh, he was doing good. He was up like 30k. He was longing OTCs, and he was kind of like teaching me like his process. And like, um, I was just like, wow, this seems this is cool because it's a lot less in fees, and like, I like how you're doing it, and I think this is the right way to start. Long OTCs. Mm -hmm. I like long OTCs, and then. Uh, I worked, like I said, and I saved up more money. Um, I sold my quad, I was back to 25. Then I made another four grand in two week, or two months. Um, so I was making like- How'd you make the four grand? Ballet. Trades? Oh, ballet. Ballet, ballet. Gotcha. So I stopped trading for two, mo yeah, two okay. months. Yeah, cool. And then I came back to trading, and I, but I was still working. I was just like taking very small dabble trades, like trying to make- What made you even want to continue trading at this point when it's- you know, because you're out of the pillow business, but you didn't lose that much on pillows, mm -hmm. but you lost more on this. What made you continue this? My love, opposed... my love for the game. My love for the game. What about bamboo pillows? I hated the bamboo pillows. <laughs> I hated the bamboo pillows. <laughs> so your love of like the challenge, even though you're losing a lot. Mm -hmm. Because I knew that I could do it. And like, I knew that and now I had like the lessons and stuff. So did you respect rule number one about cutting losses quickly more? So I started respecting it, but this is, this is what happened. So then 
Um, so June, July, just like dabbling, working, saving up. And then I had 29 grand and I was like, I closed my center point account. Like I never want to do the center point ever again. Center points, screw center point. So I put it into E-Trade, 29 grand. And me and Dom started, started talking more and he started, um, Dom was going through like a rough patch at this point where uh, I don't really want to get into too much, but he had like also some health problems. And he was just like, he was super humble. And like, I was a really good friend. And we were just like, always talk. And we both had the same passion for the game. So we became really good friends. And uh, he invited me out because he was really looking for like a closer friend because he was really struggling with uh, just like with having friends. And like, I don't know, he, he basically really wanted a friend. And I was like, okay, like, dude, I'll come out. So I came out for two, two weeks. And this was, the perfect time came out to Michigan Michigan okay Michigan just went and met this we had, we had talked like on the phone yeah. and like like we obviously were comfortable with each other and um, but you went, went out, out to out the there, cornfields went out to Michigan and I, I didn't know what to expect but basically like it was perfect timing because this is when the OTC started their second weed run and I watched him trade for two weeks and I lost five hundred dollars while I watched him make seven grand and I saw how quickly he cut. Like even at this time, I remember there was one trade where like I was down some, but I didn't want to cut. And I just like wasn't telling him like that was still in the trade. Yeah. But just like after that, like I just saw how he did it. And I was just like, like he's just cutting quick. Like it doesn't matter where you get out or like how you get out, you just cut quick. And then I was like, wow, like pff, cut quick. That's all you have to do. And then Another little head explosion emoji. Do like five head explosion emojis. <laughs> Why was that so hard for you? I, I think because watching Tim Grittani's DVD, like I just thought like cut intelligently or like... Did you not watch my DVD? Why does I, everyone listen to Tim Grittani? What about Tim Sykes? But this is, this is where like, I was like, Tim Sykes is right with this one. Like Whoa, screw, screw cutting God losses intelligently. And from there, like, I don't know, like something just clicked with me. Like something just clicked. I went home and that next month in September of 2018, first week, 2,500, second week, 2,500, third week, 2,500, fourth week, 2,500, 500 every single day. And that's why like I always not talk, winning every time, just not cutting on the, lo lo the losers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My win percent was 50%, but I was losing. I just want to be clear, when you're like 2,500, 2,500, 2,500, it's so easy. It's never easy, it's mm -mm. controlling the losses. But like that, that- What were your wins? Your wins were like 300, your losses were like mm -hmm. 50? I don't know if you remember, but like I had a trade on like CVSI where I was like, look at this, like I got in at like a, a buck, or I got in at a, um, like two bucks and I was out at like 250 and like I made 660 bucks. I was like, this trade was so good, like I made 20, 25% yeah. or whatever it was. And what were your losses on my losses? Um, I was risking like one or 200 bucks um, because I was consistently making like 500 on a winner to like 500, 600 bucks. So five to one roughly between the winners versus the losers. Mm -hmm. Like five to one. It's a good ratio. It's a good ratio, even with a 50% winning ratio. And I was just cutting so quickly. So, but like at the end of the month, I just looked and I was like, like, this is so consistent. Like this is like, was, did I just get lucky? Because like, I went from like struggling, 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 struggling to like just consistent and like just looking at my, it's on my Instagram, my monthly calendar of, I posted on my Instagram story the other day with humble beginnings, if anyone saw, but that was my first five figure month and it was my first month like really profitable. What month was this? September of 2018. Cool. And then. So here we are two years and two months, roughly three months mm -hmm, later. Not two years one month in, or one year and eight months, if I started in January 2017. No, I'm saying from now, when we're filming this video. Oh. So your first profitable month, consistently profitable month, was two years and three months ago, mm -hmm. right? So 27 months between your first profitable month to now closing in on 1.7 million. I just want people to have the whole perspective because we, we heard a lot of struggles, but it's crazy how it can add up when you have the right lessons through all your mistakes to being prepared with this market. But you, I just wanted to keep people understanding. But yeah, I didn't think about it like that. Continue for, you know, September 2018. Okay, so October 2018, like I started, I started getting a little cocky. I was like, all right, I'm gonna start sizing up. So 
the next two months I made 12 grand and it was like two 6k weeks. So I was like, wow, like I'm really sizing up. I upped my wrist to like three, 350 because now my account was Two like 6k months. Two 6k weeks in October. Oh, this was all in one month. Yeah, so the next the next two weeks I made six grand and six grand. And mind you, like the the trade was um I still remember the tickers. It was MRMD yeah. on the four dollar breakout. Yeah. I sold it at one cent below high of the day on the second day at like five seventy one for forty four hundred. Nice. And that was my best trade at the time. And then the other trade was another weed stock, but I forget oh, MMNFF. Okay. It was that one when it was at yeah. seven bucks. Yeah. Um so I, I had two of those good trades and I had a few other like P-U-R-A. That's when that one was running a little bit. And then um, me and Dom were becoming really close and I was really getting the hang of it. And I was like, all right, like, like I really want to like pursue this. And at that time, like Dom wanted me to move out. What did your parents think, by the way, when you, you made back the 12K and, you know, this was like wiping out your earlier losses? Mm-hmm. Um, they're like, oh, he's just getting lucky or something. Like, they didn't believe me at the time. My dad was like, you're going to lose it all. You're going to lose it all. You're going to lose it all. (laughs) He kept saying negative. He kept staying negative. Okay. Um, and I was like, screw you guys. Like, I'm out. I'm going to Michigan. Like, I believe in myself. Like, I can do this. I keep seeing an opportunity. And that's when I basically just got up and, like, I just left, like, all my friends, all my family. And this is when I got into Michigan. I got into Michigan, um, towards the middle of October. And, uh... This was actually my first experience with moving and trading that I should have remembered. <laughs> um, and like the market changed, like the weed stocks like stopped working so well. And then like I lost six days in a row. And when did you lose? How much? So I was up, I was up 12K and then I lost like 300, like just six days in a row. And like I got back down to like seven, eight, nine, I don't remember the exact number, seven, eight, nine grand on the month. But I was like, okay, like I'm still there and I had two red, and that was my first like thing of adaptation. Like the market like changes, right? Um, and that was like my, my strategy was working so well, but then it changed the market. So and then me and Dom started uh, really getting into it. And like November and December were also very slow, but I got by with a, a few good trades. Like HEMP ran from like uh, two cents to like five. I did good on that one. Um, and then CVSI was still running. And I also, also something to note too, like when CVSI crashed, like I was at Dom's house and we watched it together. We prepared, like we watched like the crash of uh, Fannie Mae on YouTube, like someone had it recorded and like we were prepared and I just, I missed my fills. Were you um, trying to dip buy or short? Dip buy. Okay. I couldn't short at this time because of my E-Trade account. Gotcha. Um, so like that was- What that do you mean was, you missed your fills? It bounced too quickly? Yeah, like I didn't have, I was like nervous because I didn't want to lose. Um, so I missed my fills and then. Uh, but it was a good lesson for mm-hmm. you to see it in action. How much did it bounce? Bounced from 525 by 526 up to like 650. So it bounced a dollar plus a share. How many shares were you trying to buy? I was trying to buy 2K. So you would have made like, you know, a nice two grand mm-hmm. or th- maybe 2,500. And that week, like I lost money, like I lost 500 bucks, but like I was witnessing so many plays and that's what I used in September and October to get like my wheels turning. October, I moved, had the two red months now into the November and December. Um, like I said, there was a few good trades, but like I, was, I wasn't being as consistent as I was. So like I made like five or like five to six, seven K in that month and like five, six, seven K in December. And then I finished up the year a little bit green after nice. like all the losses and stuff. Like with lots of lessons too. With lots of lessons. And then I was like, all right, 20, 2019, like I got this. And- uh, You're still in Michigan in 2019? Yeah, so I, I stayed in Michigan for a year from uh, October 2018 to September um, 2019. So to get into t- uh, 2019, like it was everything that I dreamed so far. Like to start off, it was so good. Um, the first two weeks were slow, but then the third and fourth week, if you remember me and Dom had that Fannie Mae trade where he made like 20 something grand and I made like eight grand and that was my biggest trade ever at the time. Yeah. I was really getting the wheels turning. I think I was... Uh, approaching 50 grand in profits nice. and like I was still telling my dad and he was still doubting me he was like you're getting you're just, just getting lucky and then the next Did you try to explain the patterns to him mm-hmm. I tried to explain he just it didn't want to hear it nobody wanted to hear it ever and uh then in February um that was my breakthrough month and that's when SHMP ran ALYI VYST Ooh, yeah and that month I made 
47 grand, 48 grand, and I crossed the 100K mark. Like I doubled my profits in that one month. <laughs> what were you thinking? I was like, I got it. Yes, I got it. I got it. <laughs> and like Dom had made like 75 grand and like we were just like on cloud nine. Like that was like the first like breakthrough. Uh, How good did, did that feel after all the struggles? That was probably the most, like the million felt really good, but the hun like the first 100K like, I think was the best I ever felt because I just really felt like it. And my dad was like, wow. Like my dad started like, Oh, we started to come around. Once you made month. 50 K. Okay. Like all 50 right. grand in the month. And I, right. I crossed a hundred grand. And then the next and month, those are all low priced OTC runners. A L Y I B Y S. So I made my first hundred grand all on OTC longs, like nothing else. Same. Mm hmm. And then, um, so now we're into March of 2019 and this is where like, Hey, we started to like rock a little bit. And once again, we had to adapt. I did, I did well because I wasn't short selling, but Dom started getting into shorting and Dom took a really big loss that month. And that just destroyed his confidence. And just like, um, like we all were thrown off our game because Dom was like, Dom was my rock at that time. Like I needed Dom like on the same page as me. And like, you know, we were like a team and we're like, come on. Like, and he was off his game. <laughs> what were the rest of the people in the challenge doing? Was I doing well? I don't even remember. There's too many trades. Um, I don't really remember, <laughs> but it was March, 2019. I only made FYI, like, even though I've made a million dollars plus in 2020, I only made like 125,000 all of 2019. Like I, I was not doing that great. Like I made six figures in 2019. I think I made uh, like 200,000 in 2018. Like I make six figures, but like 2020 has been my big breakout year like yours. So mm -hmm. it's not always rosy like this. Like I'm, I'm glad you're talking about the ups and the downs and like, you know, it's, it's, it's adapting to different markets. So mm -hmm. Dom is dejected. How much did you lose? Did you lose or no? I, I did shorting. good that month. I made 10 grand that month. Because oh, I was only going did that long. create conflict? Cause like Dom is down and you're up. Um, not really. Like I wanted Dom to get back on his game because I knew that that would make me better. So I was like, really like the day you're he, a good friend. Yeah. The day he lost, I was like, like I, I wanted him to feel bad about it. Like I was like, dude, just go in your room and like, just like feel terrible. Like you, like, cause that's what really helped me. Like once I feel terrible about something, like that's really when like the lessons stick. And cause then you don't want to do it again. Mm -hmm. Whereas like he, his problem was that he was just trying to ignore the pain. Like he got into, he was like, he got into playing poker and he just like got distracted off of his game and that threw my game off. And then I started struggling. Right. So April, um, I just started making like 5k a month, like very small amounts. And it was like so inconsistent, like bigger losses, like super inconsistent. And f I would say this was, again, I, I went back into like downward slope. I was still uptrending. If you look at my profitly, like if you look at my profitly, you see like that 29, like kind of parabolic and then it's just sideways. But you said you're still making five grand. Yeah, I'm still making five grand. But you're I'm disappointed with your five grand because you had the 50 grand. You want, you had that taste and then you mm -hmm. wanted more. And the problem was too, like when I was making that 50 grand a month, like I was waking up like nine, nine fifteen, and there's just so many opportunities. Right. And that's what it came down to. But like when I was not making any money in that stretch in, um, 2019, it was just like so demoralizing. Like I, I felt so bad. This was May, June, July. This was April, May, June, July, August, solid five months of nothing. And How much did you make or lose during those five months? I think it was like 30K. I mean, that's still 25, pretty 30K. amazing. That's still pretty amazing. Yeah, Perspective but, matters. But, I get it. It's a, it's a big drop off the of 50K in one month. Mm -hmm. But just to keep things in perspective, 30K over five months is still fantastic. Yeah. Um, it's crazy how like your, your emotions go up and down. Like imagine you like going back to like the bamboo pillows, right? Like if you say, hey, you're going to make 30K over five months you would be thrilled. Mm -hmm. But then once you had the taste of the 50 K month, you're like, I want more of that. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what it came down to. And I just, I knew I had that potential to do that. Um, and statistically, sorry to interrupt one more thing. Statistically, aside from 2020 sell in May and go away is a common theme where May, June, July, August are statistically, historically the worst months for traders. Yeah. And that, that really played a role. And did you realize that, that it was potentially seasonality and not just you? Um, the thing is, I saw other traders making money, so I was like, why am I not making money? <laughs> why do you compare yourself to other people so much? 
Because I can do better than them. I can do just as good or better than them. <laughs> so it's a, a competitive thing. Yeah, I want to be the best. You know what I mean? I like that. But you can also just be the best for you. Forget everybody else. Yeah. Be the best you that you can be. Yeah, and that's also like what it came down to. I knew I could be doing better. And <laughs> like those months, like I would say then in like July, like this is, this is where Dom really just kept falling off. Like he started like traveling, like going on trips and like uh, golfing and were like, you trying to pep talk him? You're like, yo, get on your game. I was like, dude, come on. Like we need to focus on trading. And he was like, <laughs> he was going on trips and like, I was getting like left at the apartment like to take care of his dog. And I was just studying. I was just studying. Like I was at this point, I was like, I got to learn how to trade NASDAQ. So I was recording my screen. I was rewatching like the stocks trade. I was trying to get any edge I could. And I just couldn't like, I didn't find anything. I was just struggling. And I was just get I was getting really depressed, honestly. Like this, I was away from my family and friends because I sacrificed. Think about it. Like I was disappointed with the 25, 30 K because I sacrificed everything. And like, I was, I was scraping to get by. Um, I mean, 25 to 30 K over five months is not scraping to get by. Never forget 90% of traders lose. Okay. So your head is in the clouds because of the 50 K month. Be worried if you have a good trade or a good week or a good month. Because this is what happens, okay? This is now good, but like for a while, we were like, I'm just scraping by, I'm taking care of a dog, I'm only making 25 to 30K. Like people in the real world, outside mm -hmm. of trading, five or 6K in a month is a good job, especially in this economy. Just keep perspective a little bit. Mm -hmm. Are we running out of film or can we keep going?